Hey guys, welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Uh, yesterday I was, I was tagged in a video, it was a Dr. Parker video. I know he makes videos here on YouTube and it was a, it was a video on Facebook. And in the video he talked about, um, you know, specialties that you would like to go into. Kind of like, how, it was a video kind of like how to choose your specialty if you were a resident, uh, a resident doctor, you know, trying to find out what specialty you were, you'd be interested in. And uh, in the video, he, it's, it's a funny video. And uh, if I find the link to the video, I'll, I'll post it on here. But uh, he basically lists off all the different specialties and kind of like funny tid tidbits about all the specialties, about what kind of personality that doctor has. And um, it kind of got me thinking I should really make a video about understanding a surgeon because uh, surgeons are like, obviously they're humans just like us, but some surgeons out there, I mean, it's not news. Some surgeons can be just complete a-holes and there's no getting around that. Um, I know of surgeons in the past that have been like sent out to anger management and stuff like that for some of the things that they do or feel that they're allowed to do in the OR and it's not okay. But I just wanted to share with you some reasons why I think uh, you know, some surgeons are pretty high strung like that and, uh, and some surgeons can have short fuses. So number one, it starts with their training. Uh, we've all heard the stories about uh, a residency training and more recently in the US they put a cap on how much a surgical resident is actually allowed to work and that's no more than 80, 80 hours a week and I mean personally I already think 80 hours a week of work is <laughs> that's a ridiculous amount of working but you know even before they had that cap they were working hundreds of hours per week so it's they just they just really really uh, work you to death in your in your residency and in, in your surgical residency can lead to you know a change in personality uh, possibly toward medicine and especially you know right out of your residency because you're already kind of used to getting yelled at by your attending surgeons and basically getting treated like crap in some of in some cases uh, and you know a lot of a lot of those types of surgeons come out of residency and they think it's just okay to act that way but it's not it's really not a second reason as to why could be attributed to you know their schedule um, they were told you know a, a good signal to show that you have a successful practice outside of residency is that you're working harder at your practice outside of residency than you would be as a resident you know these guys are already working 80, 80 hours a week as a resident and they're working almost twice as hard as an attending uh, and there's a good point to that. There's a lot more that an attending surgeon has to take care of. They're, most of the time they're not employed by a hospital. I know there's some surgeons that are employed by hospitals nowadays and I know that probably makes it a little bit easier on them. But if you're not a surgeon that's employed by a hospital, that means you own your own practice. You've joined a group of other surgeons and you are running a business so not only do you have to become a business person and you're learning how to run a business and you have multiple employees nurses and medical technicians and stuff like that underneath you working for you in your office you are also doing surgery you know four to five days a week on top of that and taking care of patients so there's a lot of added stresses that you don't really see in a residency that you do see outside in your, in your general practice. A third reason really actually comes down to specialties. In Dr. Parker's video, he kind of went through the different specialties and the different types of personalities a surgeon can be in those specialties. And for the most part, he was pretty spot on. Uh, I mean, I've, I've worked with a lot more nice general surgeons than I have, you know, vascular or neurosurgeons. On the, on the general side, you know, you've got a surgeon that maybe he just does hernias. He or she does hernias all the time, you know, ventral, umbilical, inguinal. 
Those are all pretty much outpatient surgeries. That patient comes in in the morning, they do their surgery, and then they leave a couple hours later. They don't have to constantly be checking up on the patient. Maybe they'll check on the uh, uh, <clears throat> maybe they'll check up on the patient next week in their office and see how they're you know healing. But other than that, it's not nearly as involved as say a heart patient and the things that a heart doctor has to do. You know, multiple days pre-op that they have to you know possibly get the patient's labs up to speed to where they're even able to have surgery. They have the surgery, which could be multiple hours, and then after surgery, keeping that patient, you know, alive in the ICU and recovering well, and you know, hopefully a few days or a week after after surgery, they're out of the hospital. So you can tell right there, just between those two specialties, that there's going to be a big difference in the stress level of the surgeon when they're coming into the OR. Uh, now I don't want to point any fingers, but majority of the time when you're working with like a neuro or a CV surgeon that's that's why they're a little bit more high strung and and stressed uh, as as opposed to you know like a general surgeon number four these surgeons are dealing with the families uh, you know as as techs and nurses in the OR we are in the OR majority of the time we may see the patient's family uh, right before we pick them up from pre-op and say hello and answer any questions they may have right then but um, the surgeon is has talked to that family multiple times has gone through you know the the good and possibly bad outcomes of that surgery that they're going to be performing on the patient and you know they're they're hand in hand with the patient's family and the patient throughout the whole process. So you can imagine that puts a little bit more weight on their shoulders uh, as far as as far as the surgery goes. Now I've heard that a lot. Of, I've heard a lot of people call surgeons sociopaths. because you know sometimes they may see surgeons as uh, like emotionless you know how are you able to perform surgery on someone and that someone passes away in the surgery and then you're able to go on to the next case and do another surgery how is that possible only sociopaths would be able to do that well that's true and that's false um, you know to, to be a surgeon you you have to be able to you know, take a step back away from it. Uh, you have to be able to be emotional enough to, you know, go up and hug the family and, you know, talk it through with the family when a situation like, uh, like death occurs. And you have to be able to distance yourself from that surgery to where it's not going to affect you mentally so you can continue doing surgery uh, for the rest of the day because you do have multiple patients. So I, I wouldn't call them sociopaths, but they do have to have a little bit of that trait. Uh, so some of that may trickle down into how they act in the OR as well. Now the fifth and final reason why surgeons may act like they do, um, it could just be some external things going on outside of work. You know, surgeons have wives and kids and families outside of work and maybe, you know, something's not going right in the family, in the family side of things, or maybe they're in a situation with like a home they're building or, you know, just external things that don't have anything to do with the OR and they don't have anything to do with medicine, but it's still affecting them mentally may make them short in the OR and may, and may make them, you know, irritated and it's, it's got nothing to do, you know, with the people in the OR, but it's, it's kind of like, you know, the saying goes, don't bring work home with you. Well, they're bringing home to work in some of those circumstances. All right. Now, with all that being said, I just want to say that not all surgeons are bad. I work personally with some fantastic CV thoracic surgeons. Uh, they work a very high strung and high stress job and I know 
being a surgeon is a lifestyle because of how much they dedicate their lives to work. And the guys that I work with are, are absolutely fun. Um, you know, some people may see them as, as, it's as stressful to work with them, but when you work with a surgeon for a certain amount of time, you really become familiar with them as a person and likewise with them, with you and uh, it becomes very, very easy to work with them. And it's, it's, it's usually just a great time in the OR. So I, just wanna say, <laughs> so I just wanna say again, not all surgeons are bad in the OR. I've been working in the OR now for 10 years and I can probably count on one hand the amount of surgeons that I would call a-holes. So I think that's pretty good odds, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate it. Hope you liked the video and uh, look out for more to come. See ya.